Okay, so I've just given the agenda. Today is November 29th. We're going to start off <clears throat> with uh, Jefferson's Halifax explosion presentation. Now, I haven't looked at these slides, the shared document, since um, uh, since a couple of days ago. So any changes that you've made, Jefferson, they're going to be a total surprise to me. So I'm going to be very excited to take a look at them. Here we go. All right, let's take a look. Halifax explosion. There we go. I see Cleo Main. Jefferson, you know which number yours is? I think it's one of the last one. I don't know okay. which number. There's Norexi, there's Marie, there you go. Okay. All right, Jefferson. Take it away, my friend. So, wow, uh, I didn't, <laughs> I'm just finished the assignment, but I didn't know I have to talk to her right now. I'm just writing something on my, can you, Take the, the next one I can talk to later. Okay. And, uh, All yeah. right. You got it. Um, Ilse, are you ready to go? Yes. Okay. Your? I think it's number 10. Number 10. There you are. Okay. Ilse, tell us what we're looking at. Okay. Um, my title is generosity was never forgotten. Re for me, recovering from a disaster is usually a hard process. Bostonians were the first to help people in Halifax after the explosion. Boston sent a group of doctors, nurses, aid workers and medical supplies. These people decorate the shelters and hospitals with Christmas tree and other decorations. A year later, Nova Scotia sent a Christmas tree to Boston as a thank you for Boston generosity. Uh, Nova Scotia will never forget the support, kindness, and quick response uh, the people of Boston provide after the explosion. For this reason, I wrote the title, the title Generosity Was Never Forgotten because this is a friendship between Boston and Halifax that will last forever. Excellent. Fantastic, Ilse, all right. Uh, Camilla has also joined us, let's see. Um, who would like to go next? Just tell me when you're ready. Who, who has not presented already? Who'd like to go next? Me, Nerexi. Nerexi, I think you are 11 or 12. There you are. Oh, okay. Um, oh, let me. Okay. Uh, I, I don't put the, the titor, uh in the Dax flyer, but mm -hmm. I, I, I tried, wrote, uh, the origin history behind the Canadian Christmas tree in Boston, Halifax Harbor explosion. Um, and let me, my note, let me get, uh, no, it's here, okay. Uh, it's very interesting to know about the origin of something we are experiencing. The thing is, behind us, we are seeing there is a beautiful or sad history. This is a, a, a case of the Christmas tree of, of Boston. I got or met the three years uh, ago when we went to Boston. Today, I know their history from its origin. Halifax Harbor Explosion in 1917. 
This was an uh, amazing explosion in the history most big before of Second World War. Two ships collided uh, in Halifax Harbor, coast uh, Nova Scotia, Canada, and there were many disasters in the place. The help and support coming from British uh, United States providing a specialized treatment injuries were volunteered from there. This picture uh, um, show the volunteer relief nurse in the uh, aftermath uh, of the explosion. Thank you so much, Narexi. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Does anybody know what explosion uh, in the Second World War would be um, bigger than this explosion? So before this was, before World War II, this was the biggest uh, explosion. Yeah. Jefferson, tell us what would what would top this one? Yeah, it was the Hiroshima. The most That's right. powerful Hiroshima could do and Nagasaki, it yeah. before the war. Hiroshima and uh, when we dropped the bo uh, two bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that uh, bef before this, that would be the most. Uh, the largest and most destructive explosion in the world, just 10 hours north of us. Very good, Norexi. Jefferson, how you feeling? You ready to go, my friend? Humphrey's great, but the thing is that I didn't, I didn't know how to, to explain. It. That's why I didn't take a note. Just speak from your heart. We're with you. You can do it. Okay, just... There you are. Uh, let me Tell see us what you learned. Give us your impression. Why this photo? What's going on? Okay, where well, this Tell photo? Us this, there's a story here. What is it? Let me see the photo. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, tra the tragedy broke the city. Well, that's, that explosion was the bus in the city at that time. The winter it was in, uh, on the in the same time. After the that explosion, the the degree going down like a zero below zero. In nearly two thousand life were lost in the Halifax, and more of the forty were never found. The I mean the the people who came to to help they work in like a giant because they bring food, uh, water, uh, medicines, and building houses for them and, and for for living you know uh, refuge refugium for them. And the explosion was like. More than a square mile of the city was to totally destroyed. And yeah, that you can see the picture was a, a, a mess. Mm. Yep, that's all I have. All right. That wasn't so bad. Jefferson, you did it. Thank you. All right, let's see. Oh, I see more people have joined us. I think, uh, let's see. Well, who is ready to go? Just tell me. Last. Uh, Let last me go I... because I have to leave. Marie, you got it. I think you're earlier here. You're much, much earlier. <laughs> you are Mabel, Mariana, Camilla. Melanie, Monica, all the M's. Do you know which number you are, Marie? There you are, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Tell us the story here in this photo, Marie. Yeah, the Talto is Boston's helping hand after the Halifax explosion. Um, this picture reveals literally the majority mystery 
hiding behind the tradition of Christmas tree, be sending every year in donation from citizens of Nova Scotia to Boston. So um, when you first look at the pictures, you see nurses, um, personal medical helping people who were injured after the explosion. So I was thinking about the Christmas tree. Why? Because um, the first lesson we got about that was a little bit tricky about we are looking for, we are seeking why they said a tree, a Christmas mm -hmm. tree every year to bus people to Bostonian to Boston. Why yeah. they make the old way they travel from Nova Scotia, like literally from Canada, because it's a limit of from Canada to Boston, where they make all the travel to take where they go, cut down a tree there mm -hmm. to bring to Boston. So that's, <clears throat> that's a, a kind of answer mm -hmm. of that question. Because you know, when after immediately, like um, 12 hours after the explosion, um, the person and the, the people who were responsible, uh, the government, I don't know, but like, what do you call the mayors? But anyway, the oh, person, the mayor, the mayor, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. they, they was there was touch about that. They was devastated. Mm -hmm. They said 12 hours. In briefly, they said people, doctors, surgeon, medical, uh, money. They said help to them to boost their um, people. They get them to help um, injured people, um, suffered in, um, um, children, uh, women, whatever was to touch by that that was off. So after that, they make a body because they spend a lot of time to help. They help a lot, a lot of people, more than 2,000. And then they rescue a lot, a lot of people and they were the big help. So after that, it was, um, Christmas was about to come. Say they make a party, they, they decorate a Christmas tree. And then to make sure to make that a tradition for generation, every generation, even me, I know I can tell you about that history. Uh, um, <clears throat> I knew about that, I know about that. And I, I'm sure the generation, the generation, the future the generation will talk about that. So they said a tree every single year, every Christmas from there to Boston. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they take time to cut the tree from Nova Scotia. So um, that's cost some money, but it's like a tribute they pay. But when you see the tree from there, you will remember what happened there, why they gave the, that tree. So uh, I make a connection with Christmas tree and then the help they mm -hmm. gave to those people. That's why I'm trying this picture. It's a little, it's a little bit um, sad and jo joyful, I can say. Nice. Thank you. Great job, Marie. Thank you. Uh, I have to leave. Okay. <laughs> bye -bye. <laughs> have a great day, Marie. Thank you. You too. Bye. All right. Let's see. Uh, we have uh, Mariana. Uh, Melanie did uh, went last week. Uh, Monica. Who would like to go? Mabel went last week. Camilla, 
I think it's just <clears throat> Camilla and Mariana. Yes, Camilla and Mariana. Who is first, Camilla and or Mariana? Teacher, I searched the picture, but I can't um, read read uh, enough about the. Um, oh, about the is this is this Monica? Yes, oh, come I, don't I don't finish this. <laughs> okay, so Monica. Okay. Okay. Uh, Camilla, are you ready to go? Teacher, no. Teacher, I, I searched the picture, but I can read a oh. lot about the. About okay, the so Sorry. Mariana, you, you ready to go? Um. Yes. All right. Take it away, Mariana. Okay, so Okay, I choose the picture um, with the soldiers trying to find so survivors from the wreckage in Richmond. Um, To be honest, teacher, I'm not ready to say much about it. Okay. Well, tell us why you chose this picture as opposed to others. What about this picture captured your interest? I was very interested because um, soldiers were trying to help and like to find people that were alive or to find um, bodies or like... Oh. Yeah, just to help. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I am going to. Uh, so, Monica, Camilla, not ready today? Not teacher. Okay. Cleo Main, how about you, my friend? Are, are you ready to speak, Cleo Man? No. Okay. No problem. All right. So we are going to go back to this. I'm going to introduce this for our next topic. All right. I'm going to make this a little bit small, uh, smaller. All right. This is a question. to promote an open discussion. All right, many of you have been, uh, well, all of you have had the experience of changing countries and adapting to a new life. Do you feel at this point that you are an insider or an outsider? Do you feel, which, in other words, do you feel like you are a part of society or do you feel like you're an outsider, someone living outside of society completely. Um, I think I'll take every take a minute, let everybody look at the image, decide: Are you an insider where you're living, or do you feel like you're somehow separated, living on the outside of society? Take a moment. We'll embrace the silence, and then I'll put you into a quick breakout room so you can share. Are you living a month as a part of society or living on the edge outside of society? Take a moment.
Okay, everybody. So make sure you have some kind of answer to this question in your head formed. And I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. Share your opinions. Are you living on the outside of society or do you feel like you're really a part of it? I'm going to put you into three breakout rooms to share, uh, two breakout rooms to share now. Okay, you can join your breakout rooms right now. So following the conversation you just had in breakout rooms, Russell Peters, the comedian, uh, was born and grew up uh, in Toronto, Canada. And he tells a story about how, how his family uh, had come from India and wanted to become Canadian, not just having a Canadian passport, not just in the bureaucratic political sense, but socially, culturally, everything become Canadian. And it was a very complicated process, which makes great, uh, which is great for comedy. So the question I pose, which I want to have as a full discussion, not in breakout rooms, is it possible to become a member of a society that you don't feel a part of. Here we go. All right. You guys having a good time now? Nice. So uh, this is the, you know, we're getting an idea of the show now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let me tell you something. Uh, my parents now have been in uh, Canada 41 years. They. Uh, they moved from India to Canada 41 years ago. I don't know how they picked it or whatever, but they were like, Canada. And I was like, okay, well, maybe when you get there, you'll be able to say it. So, um, but when my dad first moved to Canada, he didn't just want to live here. You know what I mean? He didn't want to be a guy that just lived in Canada. He wanted to become a Canadian. And he thought that there was things that you could do to become a Canadian. Like, like you just do a couple of things and bang, overnight you're a Canadian. You know what I mean? I used to come up with these schemes when I was a kid. I remember one time when I was a little kid, he called me. He was like, son, come here. <laughs> Here's the thing with Indian parents, too. They, they never just um, tell you directly to come and do something. They, uh, they, it's, it's just not that kind of culture, you know what I mean? Indian parents will not boss you around like that. Hey, come here. Because the, they, they have salesmen built into them, you know what I mean? <laughs> No matter what the situation is, they feel the need to convince you to do something, you know what I mean? And sometimes they'll just take one word and make it sound like a question to make you come there and be like, Russell, come. 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 So remember this one night, right? My dad was like, son. Tonight, we will become Canadians. I said, Dad, um, I was already born here. I think I got it covered. <laughs> okay, but what's your plan? He goes, son, I have bought a barbecue. I go, well, what are you going to do, cook the rest of Canada and we'll be the only ones left? <laughs> no, Canadians like to eat the barbecue. I go, Dad, they don't actually eat the barbecue, but I think I know where you're going with this. I go, what's your plan? He goes, tonight, we will have a barbecue in the backyard. We will invite all the neighbors, they will come over, eat our food, and think we are a Canadian. I said, Dad, if they eat our food, they're going to know we're not Canadian. Our food will have flavor.
Okay, take a minute and here's the question. Take a minute, take as long as you need. Is it possible to become a member of a society you don't feel a part of? You, you're, this, uh, this is not so much in the political sense. You might have a piece of paper that says you're a citizen of this country, but in terms of everyday living your life, there's, a, there's an emotional aspect of it. When you live your life every day, you're, you feel for one reason or another that you are or are not a part of the society. Is it possible to become a part of a society that you yourself don't feel you are a part of? And that's really what that story is about. Take a moment and whenever you're ready, we can share. And then we'll, we'll take a break in just a moment. We have two minutes before the break. We can take a moment to think. We can sit in silence for two minutes and that's okay. All right. Okay, it is 11 o'clock right now. It's time for our break. So everybody, I see a lot of uh, notes being taken. It looks fantastic. I can't wait to hear what everybody has to say when we come back. All right. So I'm going to go to the stopwatch right this moment. Here we go. There's a stopwatch. And we shall return in 10 minutes. Here we go. I'll pause the recording. So, oh, so yep, we've been back for just a few moments and uh, <clears throat> everyone's sharing their thoughts. Is it possible to become a member of society you don't feel a part of? Mabel shared, Erica shared, uh, who also wants to share? Is it possible? Um, teacher? Yep. Me, Mariana? Go for it. Yeah, Mariana. So, yeah, what I wanted to say is that um, I um, agree with uh, what Mabel says, that uh, mm -hmm. it's everything about how comfortable you feel with um, yeah, with the environment. Um, I've been here for like six years and I feel very comfortable, but it, like there's a part of me that still miss my country. They still do the things that um, I like to do as a Latina mm -hmm. and everything. Right. Um, but um, I think I feel part of the society. Okay. And remind everybody where you're from, please. Colombia. Mm -hmm. You're definitely not alone in this class or in the city. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Very nice. Uh, um, actually, since it was right before the break, uh, this guy, Russell's father, really had a struggle 
in this story, even though it's a comedy, he says, my father always had these little plans, these little schemes. He didn't just want to be a Canadian citizen. He wanted to fully become Canadian. He says right here. Dad first moved to Canada, he didn't just want to live here, you know what I mean? He didn't want to be a guy that just lived in Canada, he wanted to become a Canadian. And he thought that there was things that you could do to become a Canadian, like, like you just do a couple of things and bang, overnight you're a Canadian, you know what I mean? I used to come up with these schemes when I was a kid. I remember. So, is anyone actually experiencing this? Where it's like, where you're, it, that's a story of someone who feels like, well, Erica, you actually said there's this, you were going through this process. A minute ago you're like um erica was explaining pretty well saying there's there's this process there's this number of things this the, this feeling well i'm not quite a part of society yet i just gotta do this 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 and this and then i'm just about there or maybe one more year is it is anyone does anybody relate to the story of that he's telling of of his father well i can say something mm -hmm. Yeah, go I for went it, to the, I went to the Bruins game like yeah. two weeks ago. That was great. I love it. And one guy was sitting right to me. Yeah. He go to the bathroom, and who, when he came out, he say, "Permiso." In Spanish, uh, yeah. In English, says, "Excuse me." Yeah. For me, it was like whatever. I don't. I don't pay attention. Or that you know, like uh, yeah. oh, people are stupid, whatever. And the uh, the girl was with me. She's born here, and she was like upset because it's like she thinks it's like uh, something racist. But I don't think I, I don't think. All right, you guys like having a good time? Uh, you know, like uh, I don't I don't pay attention about that. But yeah, he say permiso. There was like, mm, you know. So you, I, 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 I know exactly what you're talking about because you're in this class to practice your English. You're practicing your English every day. You're doing everything you can to be a part of an English speaking society. And then somebody, a total stranger looks at you and decides to practice their Spanish. <laughs> and that makes you mad, right? <laughs> but, but, well, for me, I don't care. I mean, like, uh... It's, it's, he he feel like that. That's, 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 I don't I don't take that. I take I that would like no no no. It's okay to get mad. It's okay to I I argue. You should just let that go. It's okay to get mad because uh, I've done I've I've been on both sides of that. I have been the guy looking at somebody thinking, oh, I can hear his accent. I know a little bit of Spanish. I'm gonna practice my Spanish to feel smart or whatever I'm doing. But <laughs> for 10 years when I was living in Asia, I was trying to adapt to society, learn a language. And no matter what I did, anybody looks at me, they walk up to me and say, hello, and just want to start practicing their English. And I found it so, so hard to, when everybody who looks at me, all they ever want to do is practice their English. It's impossible to have a real relationship with anybody anyone at all personally professionally in any in any because your presence there is to make their english better for their to, for professional gain <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, no matter what you could do you could live 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 in a society 10 years 100 years people will look at you and say aha this person's purpose in life is for me to improve my english and get get that better job and that's, thing, that's the only reason even, anyone is born, ever going to talk to you. I, I've been that, and I I wanted to punch people like every day when somebody says hello to me to practice their English. I have to like restrain the anger, and, mm -hmm. and like it would tear me apart because I'm like I'm here in this culture to practice this language, and they won't let me. <laughs> I laugh about it now. <laughs> it's the same thing if you born here, but you you look like a Latin or I don't know. But I don't, it's the same. If you, you can speak uh, English very well, but when they saw you, they look like, oh, he's Spanish, or I don't know, he's 
I, I'm, I'm, feel, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna make a, I'm gonna argue with you for what I, I think that anger and frustration is the same. I totally agree with you, but it's not the same. Okay. Because but I, language, I don't feel that. I'm just saying what I what I see. We don't treat languages equally in this planet. The, here's the difference. The anger and the frustration is absolutely the same, but there's a power dynamic we can't ignore. Um, if you, when you put on a CV that you speak Spanish, what jobs are you going to get? If I have a resume and I, I can only speak Spanish, what job am I going to get? Here in USA? Yeah. Um, it's more better for you because you have you can to speak two different languages. No, no, no. If I just speak Spanish. Just Spanish? Mm -hmm. yeah. This washer, this washer. Run, yeah. Um yeah. cleaning, cleaning yeah. All, yeah, that kind of oh, that kind of job. Right. And now what if I don't speak Spanish but I speak English? What job can I get? English? Oh um, a lot. You can right. work uh, in a company, uh, yeah. whatever you want, whatever you want. So, you can, so there's you the difference. Choose. There's the, there's the difference. I think you get to choose. Yeah, an English speaker practicing their Spanish is different than a Spanish speaker practicing their English because there's a different value in the society to the yeah. languages. There, I mean, and I, I mean a literal financial value. Uh, yeah, that's what one language is worth more than another. So if the English speaker is speaking English to the Spanish speaker, it's not the same exchange as the Spanish speaker <clears throat> speaking English. In one practice, one practicing, it's um, the when one person wants really, really wants to be a part of be a part of a culture, be a part of society. The anger is real. The frustration is real, but the value that we put towards one language or one culture is not real it is not equal that's one thing we can't ignore um teacher i yeah i want to talk about that um i think it's one opportunity when you come can come with a new uh society mm -hmm. the idea is to adapt it if you can to adapt it, it's more easy for you. Mm -hmm. uh, try to, uh, it's more easy for you because um, you can to understand your language, your customs, your mm -hmm. rulers. Um, you can to interact or interact. Interact, you can yeah. To connect interact. With, the, with the other people. It's more easy for you. The difference is you can to choose to choose. Choose, yeah. Uh, I want to work in this job or this job. If you can to communicate with the other mm -hmm. person, English or uh, in French, um, you can to you have the opportunity for to choose your job. Here's a quick question. What, um, going back to this example, why would it mean so much uh, to the father to really be a part of society? I mean, he, if he stays, he has a life, he's got the passport, he's a citizen, mission accomplished. But in this story, the, it's not enough for that man. He wants to, he, he wants to absolutely trans change, he wants to be, he wants to change from one thing to the other. Like, uh, I mean, uh, somebody told me once, it's like, uh, when, you, when, you, when you adapt from one culture to the next, you're like a fish who learns to walk. He, he absolutely wants to go for, stop being Indian and be Canadian, which is, <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Why does it mean so much to, to that man to do that? Teacher, I think he feels stranger. 
-hmm. he feels he's not part of the society. He's screwed and he don't want to be part of that. He wants, besides the Indian, they have their characteristics, they, yeah. the religion, the way they are deal with situations. For me, it's pretty hard to change that. Mm -hmm. The way they, the food, because as he said before, the flavors are pretty different. And he feels strange, maybe people, because maybe the way he used his clothes, maybe people mm -hmm. stare him, oh, he's Indian, or point him, oh, he's Indian, he's not Canadian, he's not part, he doesn't feel part of the society, and it's frustrating. Hmm. But was it, I think I saw, Mariana, you were about to add something? No. Okay. All right. Did anybody else uh, have a? Did anybody else not have a chance to share? Can I say something? Absolutely, Moni, Melanie. Me oh, okay. Melanie, you're in that first year, right? You just came from Cape Verde with your mom, right? Yeah. Okay. No, tell my, us everything. Yeah. My my mom lives here like for eight years, I believe. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, okay. uh, so I don't think, I think that, um, well, yeah. I'm an outsider. I'm yeah. still an outsider. I still feel like an outsider. Yeah. But I think that you, you get to, if you get to know people and you get to go places and learn more about the, the culture or the habits of the person that from the place you live, you may or may not, um, feel more like an insider because it's something that depends depends mm. on the person you are if you prefer to stay more alone or on your own you may like still be an outsider but in your way mm. oh <clears throat> we lost Sorry. you I it's okay, you just uh, muted yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, no, oh, yeah, my mom came in the room, so I muted myself a, a, a little bit. Gotcha. So like I said, uh, it depends, because if you rather like stay alone or be on your own and something, but in some kind of way, you feel like uh, you st you're inside, you're an insider, because you're aware of things that happen, and you, you know where to go, you know some places, you may feel like an insider, you know, in your own way, but people that already are in the society may feel like you're an outsider, because you rather... Uh, um, they take things a different way and do it, do them a different way. So it's kind of a perspective, but mm. also it's kind of a choice because you, you choose how, how much you, you can choose how much of an insider you are and you can choose how much of an outsider you, you want to be too. Cause you know, it, it depends. It, it's, it's your choice. Like if you want to be more of an insider, sure thing. If you if you want to be more of an outsider, it, it's okay too, because it's people, you know, we, we're all different. We all have different goals. So it, it sure. depends. You bring up something very interesting, Melody. Melanie said there is a choice. So mm -hmm. um, would you argue that in this man's, uh, the, the, the perspective of the father, Russell Peters' father, if he chooses to see himself as Canadian. He does. Mission accomplished. Well, here, here's, here's a question for everybody based on what Melanie just said. It, uh, it brings up something else. Is it only, does it only matter how we see ourselves or do we need that validation from the society around us? For instance, uh, if I see if I live in a society and I I call myself a member of this society, do I is that enough? Do I need the rest of society to acknowledge that? I think it depends of your personality. Mm -hmm. Tell us, Jefferson. I don't know. As if you, it's always people around you and racist or, or negative. So it's up to you if you want to get it or not. 
So okay. I don't know. Uh, this is very good. I'm going to <clears throat> I'm going to show everybody what we're going to do next. So uh, I've worked on. I'm um, actually. Ba, 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 ba. There it is. All right. I created this Google slide document. I haven't put everybody's name on it, but in the same way with the Halifax explosion, uh, I'm asking everybody to do uh, this. Uh, I put instructions here, and this is a little bit more ambiguous, which means open-ended. It means um, less specific. You have more creative freedom here. So uh, I'd like a volunteer reader to read the what I wrote here. Uh, Jefferson, you want to keep going? Uh, <clears throat> can you become something else? Okay, everyday people become US citizens. Here's the link, US US website, we choose, we show you the process. After living in America, think about what it's like for immigrants, where you came from. Do they have similar experience adapting to the language and culture? Is there a part of naturalization, citizenship, uh, there are programs like the Central to help them. All right. So this will be the next uh, assignment. All right. Jefferson, you have, uh, you seem relatively comfortable um, living in Boston after moving from Venezuela. Would yes, it be similar or different for someone else? Forget all the, the crazy political situation in Venezuela, but let's say if things were not as insane as they are now, maybe if it was like uh, 10 years ago, would it be the same or different for someone else to go to Venezuela and start a new life, adapt to the culture? Well, I feel like we are, I mean, I speak for my country, for Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have a, a lot of friends from Peruvian, Ecuador, Colombia, mm -hmm. Mexican, Dominican, yeah. and, and they are still part for, for the country. You know, the, they we invite them with the parties, with the mm -hmm. houses, uh, enjoy playing together. I think Latin people is, is like, we have like a, with our culture is so friendly. We don't see like, ah, oh, you're, or black, or you short, or you gay, or you no, whatever. It doesn't matter. I I speak for myself, and okay. I think it's the same for everybody there. So Venezuela, you say, welcomes everybody with open arms. Mm, well, yeah, and like a twenty years ago, everybody wants to go there. Mm. I I meet people here, and they have mother, father, friends, they went to Venezuela like 20, 30 years ago when mm -hmm. Venezuela was really good. Melanie, um, what about you? Is uh, Cape Verde a, the type of society where people can start over and create a new life? I think we lost Melanie. Uh, let's hear from Andre. People come to Colombia, I think, uh, every day very, in the last few years. Is, is it, how would you compare the experience, the, your experience in America to foreigners in Colombia? Um, my experience here is, uh, I try to adapt. I add my life to the country, to the situation. Um, in my country, I run all the time. All the time is running, running, running. Mm -hmm. Here, I came to live more um, 
relax. <clears throat> in Colombia, the people uh, is more friendly. Is more friendly. Uh, like to be all together, uh, the family all together. But <clears throat> here we don't have uh, time oh. <laughs> for the family. Get your steps in today, Mike. Yeah. You're at work, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> I'll leave you alone, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> we don't, oh. um, for example, in, in in Colombia, in this time, in December, um, <clears throat> every family, um, every family, uh, in one meeting in one house, then in one house, mm -hmm. the next week in other house, in other house. Uh, so, for every family, every family all together. <clears throat> Here, when when Ka, when came to December, December is okay. It's one regular uh, regular month here. It's not too much in this, in Colombia. It's different this season. This season, um, I try to adapt adapt to the situation. To the people, um, for me, uh, I am feeling comfortable here. I I am feeling I can to I can to um, sleep more time here. <laughs> well, what about uh, foreigners in Colombia, immigrants, people who who've come from other places to to start a brand new life? Is it similar or different to your experience? for immigrants there uh, uh, it's different for everybody it's different for everybody because um it's different it's different because when when you came here and you are single mm -hmm. it's good for you it's good for you you don't i don't care with my family in colombia it's okay okay but when you leave your family in Colombia is uh, different. All time you you are thinking in your family, my wife, my son. Okay, I need to work here and send money, but all time is 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 thinking in, in your family. It's different. I am here with my family. It's different case for me. Yeah, Jefferson gave us a nice picture he he mentioned people from ecuador uh, mexico elsewhere in latin america um adapting to life in venezuela uh that's what i put right here what is it like for other people from other foreign countries to come to the place you come from and start that new life what i wrote here is do they have similar experiences adapting to the language and culture is there a path for naturalization? And that's citizenship. Uh -huh. um, that's a pretty yes or no question. Some countries do have a path for citizenship and others don't. Um, here is, next question. Are there programs like El Centro to help them? And of course, El Centro is pretty unique. I wouldn't expect everybody to have, a, <clears throat> have knowledge about this. But um, Mabel, um, <laughs> what's Mabel. it like for for a foreigner coming to Cuba? Is there a path for naturalization? <clears throat> Would uh, our programs like El Centro around you know say, here study the la language and go on to college for free? <laughs> well, not say the here's some free classes to improve your la language mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. Or what would the just situation so, be like? But with a person who arrives to Cuba or from Cuba to USA? Is someone who is not Cuban arriving in Cuba and starting a new life? Oh, teacher, awesome. For a, for a person who arrives in Cuba, awesome. Because he has more money, has dollars, or whatever. Um, it's pretty different for a for a person, for a foreign person, the mm -hmm. citizen in Cuba, mm -hmm. uh, they have uh, with um, less money. You have you can have a good life in Cuba. 
uh, you can buy a good house. Um, you go to Cuba, oh, tourists, you're a tourist, you are Wait, wait, you can, you, you can buy, wait, how, how does property work there? Doesn't the government own all, so, all property? You can actually buy a house in Cuba? Yeah, in the last years, yes. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, 50 years ago, no, because Castro okay. said no. You can buy a house in Cuba. You can, like, a heritage from, oh. from family. That right, or right, right. we can uh, change houses because I want to move to your house. You have to in this family, we can change the house. But on the on the table, you know, a lot of more money moving moving there because. Uh, but in front of the government, you can you do you aren't able to buy your car, your house. Right. But so far, yes. And they, so uh, right now the houses are very cheap in mm. Cuba, uh, and good houses. <clears throat> um, so when a foreign person tourist arrive to Cuba, they love it. The weather, the people there, they can they have money, so they can afford to have a good life in Cuba. Does the if government have a, have a time limit? For the amount of time you can own a house, like um, in in China, they have when when they opened up private property, they they would have like a time limit, say for like sixty years, this is yours, and the government will take it back. Is it like that in Cuba? No, 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 no. So it's yours, no. and if you it's die, your, for, you your it child, family, it's still yours. Uh, oh, for example, uh, you have a house and. You die and yeah. your do a testament to be mm -hmm. testament. Yeah. You you leave a testament when uh, your son, will, yeah. your wife, or whatever you are, right, they right. can have your your house. But they have to re like uh, repay the house. Okay, because they repay, um, repay the house. Not sure what that means. Because the the house is already yours, but okay. you pass away. Okay, yeah. a, a, an ex person pass away, yeah. and the children they have to repay the house again. Like, do you mean taxes, property taxes? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, okay, like that. Yeah, yeah, that's like the way. That. It, okay, property like taxes. Got it. Got it. Property taxes, like I that. Understand. Uh, okay. You can. I don't know if a foreign person can buy a house. I don't know, but. Uh, there's a lot of tricks, trucks, trucks there, tricks uh, there that you can buy. Yeah, that you maybe can I buy should have house. put that question. Can a foreigner buy a house in your country? Very yeah. interesting. Okay, okay. In Cuba, for a foreign person, Cuba, awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's American guy, oh, I don't know why American like Cuba because I think it's because it's opposite. Like you, well, we're so we're we're so close. Yeah. It's a short yeah, with yeah. Neighbors. Uh, we say we, we usually say in Cuba that USA and Cuba is like a marriage, but in bad terms. <laughs> they are, they, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they love each other. <laughs> well, have you have you ever looked at the other. Puerto Rican flag and the Cuban flag together side by yeah, side? Yeah, are the same. <laughs> they are the same. Like almost. Twins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, very, very interesting. Um, so here we go. Very interesting. Now I, you got me thinking. I think, and I think Mabel. Now everybody here is is who's been saving to buy a house in America is thinking. Hmm, maybe mm -hmm. I ought to take my money somewhere else. I don't know. <laughs> but um, let's see. So. First question here, do they have similar experiences adapting to the language and culture? From what Mabel was talking about, it seems like it would a foreigner would be celebrated and never really become an insider. Like, let's say if you're coming from anywhere else, it seems what you're saying, it seems like everyone would be attracted to that person thinking, OK, this person is has some has connections to more money more information every the outside world it seems like you couldn't you would be attracted uh you would be attractive to other people because you're a foreigner but 
Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it would be possible to live like a normal life as and slowly become Cuban. Uh, in Cuba, yes. You okay. can be attracted for be for in person, yeah. And the figures are different, are different because we have we are mixed like with black people and white people. Mm -hmm. And for example, we don't say gringos in US in Cuba. We say mm. Yuma. Oh. No gringo. Yeah. And we when you say, oh mira, look, that's a Yuma mm. <laughs> with long hair. Uh, blue eyes and he's from abroad he has uh we, he can a uh, he have more opportunity from the world outside or oh, he have experience he can tell oh i i've been in this country so beautiful and they have you know topics they can mm. tell and that's it's pretty interesting for some some people very nice so on the next slide, I said, whoops, this is what I put as the instructions. And on the next slide, I said, choose an image to represent your life in America and an image to represent the story of foreigners in your country. Tell a story to compare and contrast both experiences. And this is what I mean by totally open-ended. So each slide, I put my life in the US, the lives of immigrants where I'm uh, from. And I'm going to open the share settings right here, just like I did with the last Google slide. So here it is. Anyone with the link, I'm gonna share right here. So let's say, let's say uh, Mabel, I'm gonna put your name right here. I'll put your name right at the top. Whoops. So Mabel, Oops. Just a blank slide. <clears throat> On the left hand side, what would be an image to describe your life in the US? The good stuff, the bad stuff, everything. And then what would be an image to put here for the lives of people who've come from wherever else to Cuba? And, um, there are a lot of Americans who've uh, gone to Cuba, particularly for political reasons in the 1960s and 70s. Um, you could, uh, and then I would, would like you to contrast those stories. The life you're experiencing uh, as a foreigner becoming a part of this society versus the life of foreigners in Cuba becoming a part of that society. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so that's what I want everybody to think about and I'll give plenty of time, plenty of time to do that. I'm just going to post it on Google Classroom right now. So here it is, level six. Here we are. All right. Okay. Okay, and uh, the same exact instructions I put right here. the same exact instructions. All right, choose an image to represent your life in America and an image to represent the story of foreigners in your country. And I'm going to post that here, whoops. <clears throat> here it is, I'm going to post that right here. All right, and Whoops, I'll use. I'll use that right there. And what I'll do is I'll start, everyone who's here in class today, I'll add your names one by one. So Mabel, I'm just going down the line. Jefferson, Mariana, whoop. You'll see. Two ends in Mariana, right? Teacher, just one N. One N, that's right. The other Mariana in El Centro is two Ns. Ilse, Cleomane, Erica.
Cleomaine, Erica, Monica, Camilla. Monica, we didn't hear much from you today. I forgot, uh, can you remind everybody where you're from? I'm Dominican. Dominican. It, what is the process of um, being a foreigner in the DR? Is being Dominican something you could ever become or no way you either are or you're not, you cannot change in the middle of your life? You can repeat this now? What is it like for foreigners in the DR? Is being Dominican something you either are or you're not? Or is it more of a pluralistic society where somebody can move to the DR, learn the culture, and then become Dominican? Mm. I know this thing. <laughs> but, um, Monica, how is how is life in in the in Dominican Republic? How is life for a foreign person? Is, hello. Is my how is my life? my yeah. what do you say? What how is life for a foreign person for a tourist in in Dominican Republic? For me, it's awesome. Well, not a, not a tourist, but somebody a foreigner, an immigrant. Yeah, foreign. An immigrant. Because you're, you're right next to Haiti. Plenty of people come from Haiti every day. Can you come, stay years and years and years and become Dominican or no, 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 no. You're never going to be Dominican. You're always going to be an outsider, no matter what. That's, that's, that's what we're discussing. Which is why, uh, which is the story of a uh, Russell, the, the father of Russell Peters, who came from India to Canada, wanted to be Canadian, but always felt like he never could be. All right, so we're going to wrap up class right here. And on Google Classroom, I posted a documentary. I'm actually going to post a second one. Um, Here's the second one, whoops. I'll make this, uh, we'll do the, have this uh, the 1st of December, yes. So everybody can think, plenty of time to think. All right, so, I put right here a, one documentary. I'm going to add a second one. We will use these two documentaries for discussion. Uh, the first is about uh, a series of people who come to America to become American. That's a familiar story. A less familiar story uh, is the one I just shared in the WhatsApp group. And it is, the Japanese experience in Brazil. <clears throat> so that'll be a nice comparison right here. So I posted this in the WhatsApp group and we will use both of these for next class. All right, there you go. And we're done, that's it. So that's plenty for you to watch and listen to and plenty to think about. And I will see you Thursday. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.